NVMe drives deliver fantastic data rates to help boost your computer's speed. And you can use them as ultra-fast, external, portable hard drives that you can move from computer to computer. So let's find out all about them. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The size of our data files seems to be getting larger and larger every year. We're storing more and bigger files all the time. Now this puts a lot of strain on our internal laptop drives uh, in terms of both speed and storage capacity. Uh, and external drives then can sometimes become impractical because of the speed at which they operate. It just takes too long to get files out to them. But what if we could add large scale plug-in external storage that actually works faster than our internal SSD drives. Well, NVMe drives are here and, and they can provide us with just that. But how can we connect those up to our computer to get the speeds promised by this form of storage media? Well, let's find out. Hard disks are the best way to get large scale storage for your computer, especially if you want to fit this internally. USB thumb drives, well these top out at about 500 gigabytes, so if you want terabytes of space you will need a hard drive. Now they come in three main flavours. So the older mechanical drives use a spinning magnetic metal disk to store data. A reading head moves over the disk to read and write your files, and of course this becomes a slow process. So when we measure disk speed, we're going to measure the amount of data that we can move per second, and we usually measure this in megabytes of data. So megabytes are written with a capital B, so M capital B. And if you see these speeds quoted with a lowercase b, then these are usually megabit or, or perhaps gigabit speeds, which you have to divide by 8 to get the same numbers that we use for our file size. So, so using bit rates simply makes the numbers look a bit bigger on specification sheets. So our mechanical drives then can transfer data at up to about 150 megabytes per second. Now in reality this means that reading or writing a 1 gigabyte file will take about 10 seconds. These drives are, however, the cheapest option, especially when you get to very large. So we're talking here sort of over 10 terabyte disks. So if you need somewhere to store or just simply backup data, these are ideal. Now solid state drives or SSDs use memory chips to store the data, so there are no moving parts. The speed you can read and write data is then down to the actual electronics. Now most SSDs will use what's known as a SATA interface, which is just the name for the way in which they plug into your computer. So this SATA interface dictates the maximum speed you can move data for SSDs, which tops out at around about 500 megabytes per second, which is about four times faster than our mechanical drives. Now the last type is our non-volatile memory express, or our NVMe drives. And again, these use memory chips for storage, but this time they're configured differently in the electronics. So NVMe drives are designed to use the same interface that your graphics cards use. Now this is the PCI Express bus on your motherboard. The advantage here then is that this interface is very fast and it also offers multiple connections or lanes for each device. And this lets NVMe drives get up to around 7000 megabytes per second data rates, about 10 times faster than an SSD. So when you come to look at NVMe drives, there are a range of options you need to be familiar with. So, so most of our NVMe drives do end up being plugged directly into your laptop or PC motherboard, or into an internal PCIe adapter card. Now this is because of the way the NVMe drive achieves its speed using that PCI Express bus. So when you go to buy an NVMe drive, you do find there's a number of specs that you need to pay attention to. The first is its form factor, which is basically the shape, size and connections on the drive. 
If it's for your personal computer or laptop and not a server, then you'll almost definitely want an M.2 form factor. So M.2 drives are usually 22 millimeters wide with a range of standard lengths. So an M.2 2280 is an M.2 connection on a card which is 22 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters long. So our 2230, 2242 and 22110 are all different lengths of card with the same width. So you do need to make sure that you get a physical size that matches your drive connection. Next, you need to make sure that you've got a real NVMe drive. So the M.2 card format is also used for SATA hard drives. Now these use a different interface that runs at normal SATA SSD speeds, which again, as I said earlier, gives you around about 500 megabytes per second transfer rate. If you want to reach the 7000 megabytes per second rate of a true NVMe drive, you need to make sure the unit uses the proper NVMe interface. So this interface uses one or more PCIe lanes to move data around. So these are the same interface lanes, again, as we said, that your graphics and other internal cards use. So when you look at the drive specifications, you'll see two numbers quoted. Uh, for example, a Gen 3 times 4. So the first number tells you the PCIe generation or version being used. And here, the higher the number, the faster the data rate is. And in general, um, increasing the gen number by one doubles the data rate. So the second number then tells you how many lanes the drive can use at the same time. And of course, the more lanes, the more data. So, so our example of a Gen 3 times 4 uses Generation 3 PCI lanes, which each can read or write at about 1000 megabytes per second. And using four lanes gives you a maximum speed of 4000 megabytes per second. Now, one thing you do also need to be careful of here is that the manufacturer is actually quoting either a read or a write speed. NVMe drives are designed to be able to read and write at the same time, so beware of maximum data rate figures, as sometimes they combine the two operations together to give a much bigger number. So now that we know how the drive works and how to choose one, we need to connect it to our computer. So for internal drives, you might have an M.2 slot on your PC or laptop motherboard. Now, now, most modern laptops will use this connection as the actual M.2 um, board is a much neater solution. So an internal drive, of course, will need you to open up your machine and either swap out the old one or just simply add your new drive. For desktop machines that don't have a built-in slot on the motherboard, you can buy PCIe adapter cards. So here, your NVMe drive plugs into the adapter card, which then plugs into a PCIe times four or larger slot on your actual motherboard. And with this setup then, with the internal drive, you are gonna get the best performance that you can from your NVMe drive. But what if you want an external drive that you can use as a normal hard drive, but then carry your files from one computer to another? For this, you'll need an NVMe drive enclosure. Now this is another adapter board, but this time it will use a USB or Thunderbolt cable to connect to your laptop. Now the one I'm using here is from a company called Zyk, who kindly sent this one over for review. So this unit does show off the features that you want to look out for when choosing your drive enclosure. First, we want it to work almost as fast as our internal drive. So for this, we need the interface on the enclosures motherboard to be able to use the full PCIe lanes of our drive. Now my Zyk device here is built with PCIe Gen 4 times 4 support, so we can internally talk at Gen 4 speeds over four lanes. Now it will obviously work with almost any spec NVMe drive, but using lower than Gen 4 may not be using the full potential of the system. But as we'll see in a second, this might not actually be the limiting factor. So once we know that the drive caddy can communicate with the NVMe drive, we need to look at the interface to our computer. Now this site device uses a USB 4 connection, 
This gives us a 40 gigabit per second, so that's gigabits per second port, which works out at around 4,000 megabytes per second data transfer. Now, USB 4 is backwards compatible with USB 3, 3.1 and 3.2, but will also work with a Thunderbolt connection at its full 40 gigabits per second speed. So now USB 3, it works at around 5 gigabits per second or 500 megabytes per second, rising up to around about 20 gigabits or 2000 megabytes per second for our latest USB 3.2. So our limiting factor on data speed is really going to depend on the connection we have to our laptop or computer. Now, if you've got a USB 4 or a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 connector, you're in luck. This will give you the best performance, which as I said, it is theoretically around about 4,000 megabytes per second. So teamed with this uh, setup, the last part of the speed specification is the actual cable that you use. Now we all have USB cables lying around for our phones and game controllers and so on, but these aren't usually high enough quality to work with our NVMe drive speeds. Now the cables that come with the Zyke are using the full specification cables that can cope with these high data rates. Now obviously it's best to use these, or, or the ones that come with your unit, or, or to pay out for some good quality Thunderbolt or USB 4 cables. USB 3 cables will also work, but you may get some speed reduction. Um, you should also try to keep the cable length short. Um, so the shorter the cable, the faster the speed as well. You may also need an adapter to take you from USB type C to the larger USB type A. Again, make sure you get one that's fully rated for the NVMe speeds. And again, I'll, I'll put links to all the parts that I'm using in this project in the description. Now there are some other aspects that you should think about when choosing your drive enclosure. So, so most M.2 drives are held in place by screws and this stops them moving around and breaking the connection. This Zyke enclosure, however, uses a novel rubber securing bolt that keeps the board held against the internal heatsink pads so that it's both secure and it doesn't then put any bending strain on the circuit board through over tightening. Uh, again, that, that is actually a really nice feature. Now, as I mentioned um, just now, you also need to consider this idea of heat dissipation. So this unit here, the Zyke unit, is basically one big metal heatsink. So as you read and write data to the NVMe memory, it will start to heat up. The more data you transfer in and out, the hotter it will get. So with the drive locked away inside a closed box, you need to get that heat off the circuit board and dump it into the surroundings. If you don't, the drive may well start to slow itself down to protect its circuits, or indeed shut itself off to cool down if it gets too hot. So do make sure your enclosure can keep your NVMe drive running at full speed. Well, hopefully now you know a bit more about connecting an NVMe drive to your computer. So let's test out mine to see what sort of performance we can actually get. So first we'll look at my desktop PC. Now this is an Intel Core i7 system with a PCIe Generation 3 bus. I have all three types of hard drive attached, so let's see what speeds I can get. So for my mechanical drives, I'm getting around 140 megabytes per second data rate, which is sort of what we expected. Moving over to my internal SSD, that's running at around about 500 megabytes per second, again, what we would expect. My NVMe drive then is topping out at around about 2,500 megabytes per second. Not quite the theoretical maximum, but again, around five times faster than even the SSD drive. Now I do use this drive for my video work where I'm working with large video files. And believe me when I say it really does make a difference. If we now move on to my laptop, so, so this is an Intel Core i8 system, and I run an internal NVMe hard drive again, and that's on a PCIe Generation 3 motherboard. So running the disk benchmark gives me up to 3,500 megabytes of data uh, transfer per second, which is pretty much in the range that you'd expect, and gives me about seven times faster than if I was using an SSD internal drive. The telling part is now, of course, to test out this Zyke enclosure. 
So first, I'll try using it on my laptop's USB 3 connection. Uh, so for this, I'm using the Zeit cables with a USB-C to USB-A adapter, which is rated at USB 3.2 speeds. So we should be limited here by my laptop's normal USB 3 connection. But to be honest, when I first ran the benchmark, I got a dismal 40 megabytes per second data rate. Now, this is probably even worse than using a USB mechanical drive. But a bit of internet research suggested that I had my USB-C to A adapter plugged in upside down. Um, I, I actually didn't think that that made any difference to USB-C, but I tried swapping it over and uh, what do you know, I'm now getting 400 to 450 megabytes per second data transfer. So the external drive unit is working great and pushing my USB 3 port to its limits. So now for the main attraction, uh, my Thunderbolt connection. So the Zeik unit is a USB 4 device, but this is compatible with my Thunderbolt connection, which is Thunderbolt 3, and they both run at the same 40 gigabits per second data rate. So running the benchmark, I'm getting my external NVMe drive hitting just over 1000 megabytes per second. Now this is not as fast as the internal connection, but for a six year old laptop, I'm still very impressed with the performance. Compared to a full speed SSD, we're still getting twice the data rate, and this is over a USB-C cable. Now I do expect performance over a proper USB 4 connection with a modern motherboard to be faster, and indeed the quoted maximum of this Zeit unit of 3,500 megabytes per second doesn't seem unreasonable. So with a proper connection to my laptop, I can now have an external transportable drive that I can use with really fast file transfer speeds that I can swap between my computers. And even when my PC only has a standard USB 3 connection, I'll still get full SSD speeds. So hopefully then this has given you some insight into what NVMe drives are what to look out for when you're buying one, and how to create a high-speed portable hard drive for your everyday use. Big thanks again to Zyke for supplying the drive enclosure, and please do check out their website if you want to get hold of one for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed this and found it useful. If so, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for more computing, modding, gaming, electronics, and making projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. And bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.